Welcome to this London, UK edition of Behind the Velvet Rope. Stay tuned because it's going to be a very royal show. My first stop today is Theo Fennel, who makes some really cool jewelry and objects. But check this out first. Theo Fennel, what is this? It's like his initials. That is so funky, I love it. So let's go meet him. Hey, how are you? I love your store. Thank you. Now, you do have a sense of humor. I hope so, yes. Because a lot of your work does. I just picked up something before. Now, this is so chic. This is a Heinz 57 ketchup bottle. Yeah, the tomato ketchup started it all off because uh, I had clients whose wives got really cross if they put tomato ketchup on the table if they had a nice table laid out. So we made the first one, and then it just spread through to the HP sauce, to the Marmites, to French's mustard, to everything. So you have some clients that demand only the finest. Yes. And you give it to them. I certainly do. I give it to them as much as I can. <laughs> it's hard to find things for people that have everything. Yeah, and these, is. this is the ultimate in luxury. Yeah. To have, you know, a Tabasco sleeve. And the caviar bowls, which are very useful if you eat that much caviar. And then things like the cappuccino whisk. How many times does your cappuccino just lose its froth? Need an extra stir. A cappuccino? Whisk. So what do you do with that? You just well, it just revives the froth when it's beginning to fade. Wow. You know, that terrible moment when the froth begins to... I know that's a drama in my it's household, it's bad, I know. It's a bad moment. <laughs> a lot of what we do is based on very old traditions, on, on of British uh, uh, silversmithing. And for years, they would do salt, pepper, and mustards that were based on shoes. So we do cowboy boots, we do shooting boots, biker boots, Wellington boots, whatever. And then the bathroom set, which is the salt, pepper, and sugar. So the, the B day would be the, the salt. I love and then that. this is the, the little pedal bin, which is the pepper grinder. I mean, for all the gimmickry of it, in fact, they're, they're useful things and they're fun to have around. But they have to be well made. I mean, that's one of the things I would stress. If they're badly made, they get very tacky. No one's going to buy them if they're badly made. Me, except the people do sell badly made stuff in huge quantities, which is deeply upsetting for me because they make so much money doing it. You know, little pill boxes made like a little briefcase or like a so vanity cute. box. But they are, again, they're handmade and they're really, you know, I can't stress how well made they are. I mean, if you open this. How cute is that? Guitar case, pill box, and that's for the bass guitar. So that's the, the curry set. Um, so wait a minute. For the beer and the... <laughs> Is that? Well, that's the end of the meal. Toilet paper? I don't think I should go there either. No, I think either. not. So, in, in addition to all these fun things, you do yeah. some serious jewelry. Yeah, we do. Do you yeah. prefer doing the serious jewelry? I mean, silver and jewelry themselves are two very different mm -hmm. disciplines. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy both of them. And then serious and humorous, or if you like quirky, whatever you like. Two different things as well. Well, you're known yeah. for your crosses. Yeah. You sell it in America in Burke Duff Goodman. Yeah. And I've seen some of these there. What is this made of? That's tanzanite and 18 karat gold with diamonds. Do you have seasons here, or you no, just? No, not really. I think I think it's funny enough. It, it, it's a bit invidious to have seasons for jewelry because you're trying to say that diamonds are forever until next Tuesday. You know, which it doesn't really work. So you're really known for your watches, and my eye kept going to this beautiful yeah. gold and ruby watch. Yeah. 
And he was really trying to get something that was classic, but contemporary, and a guy can wear without feeling uh, too ostentatious, unless he gets to sort of kind of this one, which perhaps is wow. more ostentatious, which... This is for a man? Yeah, and there's a smaller size for women, and there's a much bigger size as well, the magnum size. But that's the all-diamond version. It goes down to a very plain version. I'm wearing the, the men's version. It's a very classic watch. That's beautiful, and that's gold, 18 carat? That's gold and enamel, yeah. This is a great color. You have an eye for color. Well, how good do I look? Very. I want to thank you, Mr. Theo Fennell, for allowing me to try on your watches. Thank you. I can have them back. Um, not really. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> how cool was that, Theo? I really like him. Well, you're also going to like my next guest, Anya Hanmarsh, makes the coolest bags around. You will see what I mean, so let's go. Today I have a really fabulous crew. We have Anthony right here. Check Anthony out on sound. He's doing a good job. We have Dwayne, which you can't see on camera, and Sam, cute Sam. Who's opening the door for me? I want some service here. Excellent job, Sam. He's got brains as well as being cute. We're here at Anya's, and look at her window. How cool are these little bags? Hello. Ooh, good to see you. I interviewed her at the British Invasion at Saxe Fifth Avenue Absolutely. a while ago. Absolutely. New York is more fun being in New York than in London. Yeah, it was great. Oh, no. London's fun for me, because I'm used to New York. <laughs> so I'm having fun. <laughs> and this store is fun, and your work is fun. Thank what about you. this bag? Get out of my way, Anya, because I love... <laughs> bossy lady. I am very bossy. I'm from New York. So, look. How cool is that? It's fun, isn't it? Well, we started this new label called the Blue Label, which is our line. I wanted to do something that was kind of throwaway fashion that you could have for a season and just enjoy and uh, and not have to sort of make a major investment for. And we, we had all these old photographs that we used for our mail-outs, and everyone loved them. And so we then printed them on bags. And in fact, they, we've, we've almost sold out. I think we have about 10 left. Oh, you know, that's like my baby. That's like Tulula Consuela. <laughs> I have a chihuahua. <laughs> Oh, she's so kinky. And there's another image of her doing the high kicks. And in fact, when we opened our store in New York, we had on the invitation on the front the, the granny doing the high kicks. So we're very fond of her. She's yeah, um, yeah, you opened the store in New York. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's in a great location, too. Yeah, right near Barney's. What is it? 60th and, 60th and Madison. Yeah. Just so, OK, these, these bags were in the window. So explain. Well, these are, this is a very English thing. These are English candy, as you call it. And so we have jelly babies, which you don't have, do you? No, we don't. <laughs> and these are the actual jelly babies. So we've embroidered it really beautifully all by hand so that it's like a little jelly baby's bag. And this is walkers, which are crisps or chips, what do you call them? Chips, potato um, chips. Exactly, so here is, here is the bag. And so we've embroidered them to be like a little chip bag. I love those. These are too small looking for up me, your skirt, but... don't they? They're, <laughs> they're looking up... They're, yeah, I didn't think of that. That's great. <laughs> so they're very Magritte, no? <laughs> it's nice to do fun things as long as they're beautifully made. That's the one. I'm a stickler for quality. So it's got to be absolutely exquisitely made in, in the old-fashioned way and hand-beaded and so on. Because if you did this idea and you did it cheaply, it would look awful. And then it doesn't look humorous. It looks just cheap and funny. Now, this is the main line, the much more special line. This is a sweet little bag which has got little ants crawling all up it, which kind of makes you want to itch. And then they're all um, handmade. This is one that's made of Austrian crystals, which are the Swarovski crystals, and they're all leather-lined and, and quite special. So it gets to be sort of slightly more serious and something that you might keep and kind of hand down to your children and, and enjoy for many years. And then this is probably sort of our trademark little bow, which um, I have a bit of a fascination for, for old-fashioned tassels. So. This would be more expensive than Yeah, it is, it's, exactly. It's handwork and it's leather line, so it's, it's investment pieces that will last much longer. We've just started doing our own little line of cashmere, which is made in Scotland, just because I really wanted to do it. And we've done some very pretty ones, I'll show you, which have little spiders, like the ant theme, and the spiders are crawling up, embroidered, crawling up the sleeve, which is quite fun. So. Well, the other room, yeah. I know that you do little leather purses and things that yeah. you write addresses yeah. and names, yeah, yeah. so let's go look okay. at that. This is something that we can only do in our shop, because obviously we can't sell it to shops. So you can have actually your own name and address in your own handwriting. Um, and you can have a special date. In fact, we've done special stamps. For example, I've given them to my, um, my sister on the day before she, she got married. It was the last day of her maiden name. I've given them to my godsons on the day they were born. These are cute. Look They're at these lovely, tiny little purses. They're kind of like meter money, you know, for your car meter. 
They actually take 10 one pound coins, so they're actually quite good for, uh, for meter money. <laughs> I love the eye. It's so demented. <laughs> So you have three different looks here. I mean, this is more businessy. A lot but of don't things. you think you can be three different women and one woman? I think that you can be kind of sexy and silly, and you can be frivolous, and you can be grown up, and you can be kind of sentimental and romantic. I think you can do all of those things. And so I kind of design what I like. And sometimes I want to be that, and business-like and serious. And other times I want to be silly and this throw is away, wonderful. So. <laughs> this is like a little jewelry case. It's quite fun just to take away some jewelry, just if yeah. you're um, traveling. Now this is cool too. This is a bigger jewelry box. Yeah, which is fun. In fact, we've actually just made a very similar design um, to this for British Airways for their first class passengers um, and we've done it in nylon and it comes filled with all the different things it changes every six months so you might get philosophy or Aesop or um, that's amazing. all the different really latest brands which is quite fun so you have a lot of stores now I mean things are really good for you it seems like this is your time it's very exciting yeah I don't want to be everywhere though that's not really the point of what we do in a way I'm quite bored of all the stores that have a, a, a space on every single street because it makes it very unspecial we opened our store in New York just because we really wanted to do one there and I, I wanted a, a home there to offer some of the personalized things that we do um, but we're not going to be going completely mad mm -hmm. um, I want to keep it small and manageable who, who are these people are these your relatives is this your I wish they were, they're so fab. Fess up, tell the truth. <laughs> I promise, I promise. But the body language, they're miserable. Well, they're miserable, but they're probably just sort of, I don't know, resigned to the fact they've probably been together for 60 years, don't you think? And they're just sort of, you know, kind of miserable but happy. It's, you know, it's old married stuff, isn't it, finally? Oh, is this what you were talking about? Yeah, this, talking about this is the little, little spiders that are pulling up the side. Very cute. Very itchy. No, he's so cute. <laughs> and this is then a monogram done in beads, which is quite sweet. Well, I want to thank you for allowing us here. It's great. Such Congratulations. Pleasure. She just had a baby. Congratulations <laughs> on your store in New York. Thank you. So everybody go shopping and buy some Anya. <laughs> Do you think Anya planned this? But her bag matches my outfit today. It's black and white. Amazing. Well, now we're going to go right next door and meet Ollie Spencer. I love that name. Ollie Spencer of Violet. He's a designer. So. Oh, Ollie, I'm doing? Lauren. You came to the show in New York. Didn't I you? most certainly did, did come to your fabulous uh, show in New York. You. It was amazing. <laughs> You know, my specialty in life is textiles, and so we were thinking, you know, take sheer and use a lot of sequins. The problem now, right now, is everybody is using sequins for everything, and it's everywhere, so you have to move a step forward from that. But at the time when we first started putting sequins onto um, organzas and things like that, it just, you know, it wasn't done. It. What we were trying to do then was to try and make English clothing wearable. Half of the problem we have is that we're quite a creative nation, but at the end of the day, the body fits don't work a lot mm -hmm. of the time. And we produce clothing that is perhaps too avant-garde. So what we wanted to do was to produce stuff that would be fun, light, and easy to wear. The whole um, flesh situation and sheer fabrics and being sexy in a really quite a raunchy sort of way it has sort of come through. But, but I don't but, feel it was raunchy. I think that show was kind of feminine. The fabrics were floaty and sexy and it was womanly. I wouldn't say it was pornographic or a little naughty maybe. The whole collection was really right for us but we did the collection and we didn't really know how we were going to produce the thing. We were having it made in Italy and they were having a dreadful time with it. But, you know, eventually we got it all done. We didn't make any money on it, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, but you did. And it's not, sometimes it's not always about the money. No, it's like for the, this, is this is definitely not about the money. I, you know, it, frankly speaking, I make money doing menswear. I've got another label called Favorbrook, which is all menswear. Favorbrook? Yes. So is so the menswear very conservative? No, 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 not at all. Our customers range from Paul McCartney to the Gallagher brothers to... Oh. Um, you know, Joe Public, it's all occasion work. So you design your own fabrics? Yeah, that's exactly so what we do. Right at the beginning, we get a fabric, we design the fabric, we get the fabrication made up, and then we start looking at garments right now. Actually, downstairs, we've got uh, Spring Summer 2001 up on the walls at the oh. moment with all the fabrications and everything. Well, let's so take a peek. We can go, go and have a look at that. 
Oh, everyone's working really hard down here. I love this. So organized, so neat. So these are fabrications that we're using for 2001. So these are no, still pastelis, but just a little more bold. So are you doing shows? Are you doing another show? You know, the, the purpose of doing a show is a twofold purpose. One is to get uh, the buyers in there, and the other is to get the press in there. And at the end of the day, my collection as it stands at the moment is very easy to see in a showroom on hangers. And a lot of people will buy it separate and place it with other garments from other designers. So it works quite easily like that. You were saying yeah. that you don't go on sale here because you only have like 10 pieces left. You sold everything. Look at what's left. Turn around. That's the whole stock collection. There's like nothing left. I mean, I'm not against sales, but at the end of the day, if you sell out your collection, then what's the point in putting it on sales? We're also getting quite heavily involved in homeware as well. Homeware? Yeah. Chuck me over a cushion, James. Woohoo. That's lovely. That type of thing. Beautiful. I want to start bringing violet as an interior concept into people's homes. Mm -hmm. So how do you have time to do everything? You do favorite book for men and women, you do violet, you're doing home furnishings, interiors. I mean, basically, you don't do everything yourself. And I work with James here, I work with Claire here, and everybody gets stuck into the collection. It's not me just doing the collection. It's a team event. And it's a team event, whether it's women's wear, men's wear, or interiors. You're young to, to be doing all this. Well, it, yeah. I mean, I don't feel young. <laughs> I've just turned 30, whatever, so oh, it's, not my such a God. Good, it's not such a good so thing. So young. Stop that. I'm going to kill him. How dare you? I'm a little older than that, but I look good, so it's all the makeup. You do. You do. You do. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, Ollie okay. Spencer. This was, like, really fun. Give me okay. a kiss. <laughs>
That is just oozing sex. It's a bit punky looking. The Diamante makes it a bit more sort of glamour. So you've got like glamour, punk, sexiness all mixed together in one shoe, which gives you that funny sensation up your spine. <laughs> gives you that funny <laughs> sensation. So it seems yeah. shoes are getting very much more opulent. Yeah. Oh, it's time for luxury. This was part of like more of an antique look mm -hmm. of the range that we did for the summer, where they were kind of heavily embroidered, but very feminine at the same time. Who wouldn't love that? It's like Cinderella, princess shoes. We make all the shoes in London, mm -hmm. and we're the only people in this country left making this type of shoe. So they are extremely exclusive. We make maybe 20, 30,000 pairs of shoes a year, and that's it. That's not that much for no. worldwide. So if you have a pair of our shoes, it's unlikely that someone else is going to have that shoe that you're going to come across. This, out of my way, guys, because <laughs> this is like TDF, I say, to die for. These are amazing. Yeah, that's chain mail, Diamante. Beautiful. These are just so simple, but the color, they're so exquisite. Yeah. It's like cotton candy. It's like yeah. a confection. This These. is where it gets wild and funky, where we're using combinations of pony skin and python and metallic leathers and bright colors, and we have fun here. These are outrageous. They've been a real great hit. It's a fascination to make a shoe that you can put in your shop window that will stop people going down the street and they have to come over and have a look. What is that in that window? And once they see it in the window, they have to come in and try it on. And when they've tried it on, <laughs> they have to buy it because it's just irresistible. It's an addiction. This is, and, this is bad. Um, it's like an addiction here. We just love that. We just love that. You guys are trouble. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the money just <laughs> flies out of a lady's pocketbook, a handbag. It just like has wings on it. Well, I want to thank you so much. It was just incredible. It's like a gallery. So thank, thank you. you. I love your work. Oh, thank, thank you. you Come to visit much. me in New York. Oh, we'd love to. We'd love to. We will probably will, won't we? Okay. And we'll bring shoes. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> As it should be. Don't come without them. <laughs> I just got some fabulous shoes from Gina. Today is a really fun shopping day. Well, now we're going to head off to my last stop, Boohoo, Maria Cratch Bogle, who designs for the Spice Girls, Madonna, lots of cool people. And you're going to meet her, so follow me. Well, we're on South Moulton Street. It's the cutest little shopping area here. They have a lot of little stores, boutiques, coffee shops, more shoes. Oh, Molten Brown, cool beauty products. Hi, it's Lauren from Behind the Velvet Ropes. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Come on up. Okay. How beautiful is this? Feminine and flirty, love that. Hey. Here she is. How are Hi. you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I was peeking before you got here. I love this dress. Thank you. Thank you. We this has it, a name. We call it the Black Widow, actually. And you can kind of see why. It's all um, it's all been hand devoured in kind of the shape of a spider's web. It's quite amazing when it's on. It's very sexy. So let's sit and chat. Let's okay. sit here. Girl talk. Girl talk. I was coming to London. And I said, who did I, I called somebody up and I'm like, well, who's hot, who's happening? Maria Gretsch Vogel, you have to do her. She's like fabulous. She does clothes for Madonna and this one and that one. So all of a sudden there's a buzz. Why do you think this is your time? You know, people are really interested in what you're doing. I think it's down to um, really the sort of return to glamour and women wanting to be women again. Um, I think there's been really, I guess, a move away from fashion per se and into a woman expressing her personal style and her saying, I'm going to take control of the way I look and I'm going to make myself look fabulous. What I've always done is glamour. It's a very sexy, womanly, confident look. And women really love it. When they find the clothes, they come back because it's cut kind of differently. It sits on the body really well. And I guess that, that's probably why. So for most of your clothes, you really do need a good body. They're very body conscious. Um, you'd be surprised. There's actually, um, there's different body cuts that suit different people. 
the whole look is very light. It's supposed to be kind of transseasonal, and so that one can kind of really layer things up. Mm -hmm. And so for sort of autumn, winter, you may have, um, say, cashmere, but you might have sort of macrame shawls layered over the top, or sort of long tweed coats. The idea of sort of mixing and, and layering, and, and a kind of eclectic style that you can put together yourself, really. This is spring, right? This is so exquisite. Well, that's the other thing I've always liked to do is develop my own textiles. This is an embroidery technique that I developed on just a very simple net, a very simple cotton net, and all of the rest of this is embroidered little petals with, um, with chiffon and, and lurex thread. So I, I like to work on things like embroideries, bead design, working with really unusual cutting, where the, all the cutting sort of mirrors the shape of the body and is cut to really shape and sculpt almost the female form. Now, how many seasons have you been designing for? Mm. Oh, I feel old. Oh, um, please, that's what I'm just asking, because you <laughs> look so young. I, I mean, I've had the business for about nine years, but I guess really in terms of, like, selling abroad and stuff, it's been about five years now. You've had this for nine years? Mm. Wow. It starts off really small, organically grown, and that sort of thing. When are you going to show in New York? <laughs> you need to have a show in New York. Soon, 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 soon. You need to have a store, too. I mean, do you think it's better to start slow? Because I'm sure, like, now everyone's telling you you have to do this and you should do that. I think you have to build and you have to develop to a certain degree organically um, because you need to learn things. And I think, me having been in business for nine years, I've learned a lot. And for, certainly for the first five years, I'm very pleased I didn't take it any bigger because I don't think the production could have coped. Um, but then it gets to a point you say, OK, I'm ready for the next stage. So I started expanding it in a bigger way. Um, and now it's doing so well on a retail level. I get so many people in here, into the showroom, that we're, we're now thinking about opening our own store. And, you know, maybe that's the next stage. Well, you're getting a lot of press. I mean, I see Elle, Vogue, Cosmo, Marie Claire, Esquire. I mean, it's just like, how do you feel after nine years that it's now happening? I think it's very exciting. It feels like, really, I'm at the beginning of, of a new phase. Mm -hmm. um, and it has done really since the beginning of this year, because, as I said, the clients, really, this was a whole, show, a whole sale showroom before the beginning of this year. I had wow. a few clients, you know, that came back regularly, and it kind of grew, but very small. And then since the beginning of this year, it's gone mad. People cannot get enough of the clothes. They're selling out everywhere. Well, I want to thank you so much for letting us come here. It was thank amazing. You. I love your clothes. Give me a hug. <laughs> you got to call me when you come to New York. I will, definitely. We'll do lunch. Yeah, okay. fantastic. Lunch, you heard it. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this royal edition of Behind the Velvet Robes. See you next time for more fashion, style, and glamour. I gotta phone home now.